Hi, I'm Bill Holliday, a teacher at Brattleboro Union High School who has had the pleasure for the past year of teaching the young man to my right, Friedemann Schmidt. He is from Leipzig, Germany, and offers some interesting perspective on the town of Brattleboro, on Brattleboro Union High School. So welcome, Friedemann, to the BCTV studio. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So Friedemann, um, what are the circumstances that have put you here in Brattleboro, Vermont? Uh, there are a couple of circumstances. Um, I've been here on a exchange program uh, one year ago because my school back in Germany, the Friedrich Schiller Schule in Leipzig, Germany, has an exchange pro German exchange program with Brattleboro Union High School. And I came over last fall for three weeks and uh, I very much enjoyed my time here and I had a great house family and I signed up for a scholarship, the Congress Bundestag Youth Exchange Program, which is a governmental sponsored by the US Congress and by the German Bundestag, which is the German Congress. And uh, luckily I got the scholarship and I was able to talk with my host family and figure out a plan how to signed them up so I could actually go to Brattleboro Union High School and fortunately that worked out. How prestigious for you <clears throat> and how difficult for you to be chosen in this program? It was there a great competition? Yes, uh, it is it's very prestigious and is probably among high school students the most prestigious scholarship to come to the United States. and. Uh, I had to go through different levels of where they actually filter people out and luckily or the final step would be uh, an interview with a local congressman and he would then figure out what of a couple of people to, to actually send and I was chosen to be the one. What kind of a student are you considered by your peers, by your teachers back in Leipzig? Oh, probably above average student good student. Just above average? Uh, probably a little bit more. I'm just, yes. One of the best probably in my school. The reason I ask is you've done spectacularly here at this high school, including winning seven academic awards today at the underclass awards ceremony. You're very humble about it, but that is amazing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I won a couple of awards back in Germany too, and I would say uh, it probably is maybe a little bit, or it was a little bit more competitive in Germany, but there are a lot of smart kids here too, a lot of kids with whom I can talk, and we're probably on the same level as back in Germany too. Now you have some interesting perspectives now on the American school system vis-a-vis yeah. -vis the German school system. Where do you start? Uh, well, when I first, or the impression in Germany when you actually talk about American high school, it is like very, very easy classes. You can possibly, it would be impossible for a German kid to actually fail. You're going to be the best. You should choose the highest math classes and, uh, uh, yeah, they, ex or they, commonly it is known that it's probably not very, very, uh, difficult to do. But uh, I saw that you actually can choose between a lot of classes and you can see you can make it yourself easy or you can make it yourself not easy because in America you can choose the classes you want to take in Germany you have to take a certain amount of classes around like 16 different classes and you have to take them there is not a lot of choosing and here it's more like choosing and a lot of people who come here probably choose fun classes and I did so too. I did baking and pastry, but you can also take very, very competitive classes, which might be actually more difficult than they, than the average in German, Germany. Did you find anything that you did here academically to be um, as strenuous as what you would have to do back in Germany? Or maybe it's different what you have to do in the two countries and not comparable? Uh, Yes and no. There, are, there were things which were more challenging for me here, uh, especially 
in my English classes because I'm not a native speaker and that was challenging. But also the kind of way we had to write a lot of research papers and in Germany it would be like one research paper a year and not three research papers over a semester. So it was, there were some challenging aspects and I would say there were some things which were more difficult in, than, than they are in Germany, but uh, some are not. But it is different in the way that uh, in Germany you are being in class means that you usually like listen to your teacher and write down what your teacher writes on the board. And the challenging part in Germany would be to write the quizzes and tests on it because they would be more challenging here. It is more that you actually hand in papers, which I like more because it gives you a, more the opportunity to actually reflect your own opinion rather than just uh, write down what your teacher asks you to write down. But you've set a high standard for writing in English to the point where you won a writing award today. And as you shared with me, some other students now are asking your help in writing their papers in your second tongue here, English. Yeah, it was quite different for me too because I was I was never very good in German class back in Germany, which is basically the same like English classes here. Uh, but I set it as my goal to take one English class a semester, and I was very fortunate to have a uh, Mr. Kersey, a very very good English teacher, with me who constantly uh, helped me to improve my English and my writing skills, and put a lot of effort in that. And I tried to. Uh, appreciate that by looking closely what he told me to improve and that's what I tried to do and yeah I hope that my English skills significantly improve. Culturally have you had to make a tremendous adjustment to fit into the American culture or is it pretty much the same as it was at home? Uh, it is not that different no it is very very similar and I didn't have a huge difficulties to live here uh, the people here, I would say, are more relaxed, a little bit more outgoing, a little bit more calm. In Germany, people are probably on the first side a little bit more serious and don't take a lot of jokes. But uh, not that everyone is that way. That's just like my appearance. The people here are more outgoing. It's a little bit more easygoing. But there are not huge differences between those both countries, I think. You've also had a perspective of history that's different from what you would get at home. An American viewpoint, what have you found about that? Uh, that was very, very interesting, especially. We don't have a lot of US history in my class. We have a, US history basically starts from, or actually is basically only World War II and World War I, and maybe the stationing of US soldiers in West Germany, West Germany, but, uh, so I got a little bit more input. Caught yourself there, didn't you? Yes. West Germany. Right, I did. <laughs> it doesn't happen often. No, it doesn't happen often. It happens since uh, people told me the difference between V and W, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we didn't, we didn't actually talk a lot of about politics back in school, about US politics back in school, but uh, it is what we are told is more like that the American uh, well, invasions or interference in world politi politi politics uh, is more seen as very, very positively. And here I get more the appearance or I get more detail about U.S. foreign policies, which involves both positive and negative aspects. So I get a clearer image about how the situation is itself. And you yourself personally have a very deep interest in the American political system, yes. how it works to the point where you've stunned American students. I remember I would occasionally phrase a question, let's help our foreign guest here, let's help Friedemann with uh, some aspect of American government structure. And you actually knew and the Americans didn't always know. So it was a little bit odd. They couldn't understand how you would know so much about our system when, as we found, they didn't know as much. Yeah, was, 
uh, probably because I am very interested in the political system of the United States and very, very interested in the history of history of the United States and uh, as a matter of fact actually more interested in US po politics and US uh, history than German history and German politics mainly probably because I uh, had a lot of that already but uh, and I'm constantly surrounded by it but I'm very very interested in that topic and that lets me to research a lot of things probably which normal kids probably wouldn't do. You also have enough interest to have sought out politicians. You've met, what, two United States senators from this state, the one representative to Congress from this state, the governor from this state, and you were feted at an event in Montpelier. Can you tell us about your interest in meeting these people, A and B, your participation in the contest that landed you in Montpelier with Senator Bernie Sanders. Uh, yeah, I was from the beginning very, very interested in actually meeting U.S. government officials and uh, the program on which I am on this Congress Bundestag Youth Exchange actually uh, encouraged to meet your officials to have a exchange of ideas and thoughts because you're supposed to act like a little German junior ambassador and as a part of that you were supposed to talk to government officials and I saw the con contact with those people and uh, I enjoyed meeting them and talking about uh, differences and uh, similarities with them and uh, yeah I tried to meet Bernie or I was as a matter of fact I tried to I haven't contacted Bernie Sanders on a private level so I saw the announcement of that there is a contest in which you can participate and uh, I thought it would be a nice opportunity to take at least or try to take part in this and uh, I wrote a or the task was to establish a own state of the union address an essay I wrote like 350 to 500 words about a topic you think is very very important for US politics and uh, I thought that was interesting and I wrote a essay about it. I wrote my essay about the effect of the uh, US public debt on normal people, specifically the poor and middle class people in the country and yeah, I got chosen among the 20 best and I had the opportunity to meet uh, Senator Sanders in Montpelier. At the State House and Senator Sanders moderated a discussion which involved U-20 students while a fairly sizable audience sat in the room and listened. How did you find uh, the experience of participating in that uh, discussion? And uh, you had a heavy influence on the way that Senator Sanders approached things internationally instead of just domestically. I was very, very right thought it was very very interesting and especially hearing uh, Bernie Sanders point of view on a couple of issues the nation is facing and uh, I thought it was interesting too to hear American students who are very very interested in politics to talk about those things and share their opinions and yeah uh, I was the influence probably was because uh, a lot of the aspects Bernie Sanders is trying to implement within Vermont or and within the country itself uh, are aspects which might actually been implemented in Europe or in, in specifically in Germany as well uh, considering that he wants to or that he wants to increase the uh, governmental spending for health care which already exists in Germany that uh, there is actually health care which is provided by the country, fully provided by the country, and uh, the abolishment of t tuition of state schools, which is also abolished in Germany, which means that uh, German students as well as international students, including U.S. citizens, can actually go to college in Germany for free. And also his policies on climate change are very much similar to those policies which are already implemented in Germany. So there are 
a lot of similarities between him or his agenda and the agenda or yeah and the common agenda of Germany and Vermont itself I think is very very similar to or shares a lot of uh, values or specific values with Germany as well. Which political party in Germany do you think he would fit into? Oh, he would probably, I probably would see him probably as a, there is a left wing party which is called Die Linke, which means the left one, maybe that one, maybe uh, the SPD, which is the uh, Social Democratic Party of Germany, uh, but also it is like, I would say, even the right wing politicians in Germany or legally right wing politicians which are uh, in the government as a matter of fact including uh, the party of Angela Merkel CDU are for American standards still probably considered to be very very left. Having been in America having met Bernie Sanders having seen him throw his hat in the ring as a potential candidate with the Democratic Party do you vote for him? Well, I would. If I would be able to vote here, probably yes. Probably yes? Yeah, I mean, I would in the, uh, yes, I would in the primary. We'll see how it goes, but yes, I would. And as a matter of fact, in the school, we actually uh, organizing a club, which is students for the election of Bernie Sanders to president, and I, will participate in that club and I'm happy to do that because I think a lot of the values he addresses and a lot of the issues he addresses are very important and what from I have seen in the country itself would actually benefit the United States as a whole. One of the other things you've done while you've been here is to reach out to the German consulate in Boston and arrange for an official from the consulate office to come to Brattleboro Union High School, introduced him, and facilitated a discussion after he had finished his remarks between himself and Brattleboro Union High School students and staff. Yes, uh, I thought it was very important not just only let me getting an experience, but also giving the uh, American students or Brattleboro Union High School students the possibility to I have access to German politics and to German point of views, international point of views, and especially in the relation between Germany and the United States. And I thought the best way of doing that would be to contact the consulate. And fortunately, they've been very uh, cooperative, cooperative with us so that we actually could do this. So a lot of students enjoyed it. and the. Deputy Consul, Mr. Langus, who was at our school, enjoyed it too. So, yeah, that was, I'm very glad that we had those, this opportunity and I think it is very important that there is a constant cultural exchange and I just wanted to contribute to that. How about your friends uh, back in Germany, <clears throat> your schoolmates, your friends in general? How badly do you miss that or are you in contact with them? Sometimes I, I am in contact with them and uh, Sometimes I miss them, in particular some of my best friends, but uh, it isn't the case that I don't have friends here and I have a lot, m met a lot of nice people here and I gained a lot of good friendships and uh, meaning that it is, was not that essential for me to actually seek the contact with the people back home. I like or and I enjoy to have a conversation with them, but it is not that I would uh, uh, that I would actually be or trying to seek the con conversation with them and, or just in the case that I need them to talk to since I have very, very good friends here and a lot to talk with them and enjoying my time there. At the awards ceremony today at BUHS, the school made an effort to recognize all of the foreign exchange students and it's pretty obvious that the kinds of students who are in these exchange programs, yourself included, have had a dynamic effect on the school uh, and have been generally and pervasively accepted by the people in the school. And there was a tremendous applause for all of the students today, but you 
approaching the podium on several occasions for multiple awards, there was a spring in the audience's voice. It was a little louder, I thought, for you. I think you've become a little bit of a cult hero, even. How do you, how do you handle that? Because I've never heard anyone say a bad thing about you. You're universally liked by everybody, staff, faculty. Well, I try to be nice and be charmful and to be a little bit funny sometimes, too, a little bit more easygoing, but uh, I enjoy a lot of the people and I like that the people are easygoing and very, very kind and open to new people. That, this is why I think that a lot of, actually all of our exchange students have been very much uh, accepted in our school and perfectly embedded and uh, yeah, we had a great time. I think every one of us had a great time at the school and met a lot of new people and uh, got, a new fr got a lot of new friends and I'm very grateful for that. I've noticed even a few years ago, I hopped on a train, went to New York City, there were two former exchange students, one from Brazil, one from Austria. And the common language was English and the experience at Bradley Union High School. So they met together with their host families and went to New York City together for a while before they flew back to their respective countries. Have you developed those kinds of friendships with the exchange students? The commonality being English. You're the only German. There was a girl from Spain, somebody from Mexico, for example, somebody from Indonesia. But the common thread is American culture and English. Exactly. And that's why I think a lot of people actually come to the U.S. and try to study because English is the international language of business and the international language in general. And uh, to improve this, a lot of parents sent their kids abroad to the United States or the UK and yes, talking to different people from different cultures is usually over English and over maybe the American lifestyle, maybe about sharing uh, common things or experiences which they had in the United States. So the United States and English itself is a very essential part of a lot of international friendships. How would it work the other way? We send students on exchanges for a week or two and then kids from your school in Leipzig come here in the other direction, but this is much more than that. Do you find that there are similar opportunities for Americans, American high school students, to go to Germany and do a full academic year as you've done here in the United States? And if it does exist, how often do Americans take advantage of it? Uh, I would say that uh, there are less opportunities for American kids to study in Germany. Just because the, or Germany, I think I talked to my exchange organization itself and they said, uh, or Germany is probably the first country or the country with the largest number of actually sending people to the United States. So a lot of German families have a huge interest in getting uh, improvement of their kids' English and edu uh, education. Uh, but I think that there are, oh, so yeah, I think that there are the opportunities for American kids to come to Germany are probably less, or there are less opportunities than for German kids to come to America. But uh, that doesn't mean that there aren't opportunities at all. In fact, there are a lot of opportunities, but I think uh, a lot of like normal high school kids are not well informed about that. I think that would be an important thing to change. People have a stereotypical view of another country. Yes. How does, or did, you're almost done, how did the stereotypical America, as perceived by the majority of Germans, work itself out? Did it prove to be true? for you, having lived here for almost a year now, or were many myths dispelled by your experience here? Oh, uh, let's say probably half and half. There are some things or, I mean, a lot of the uh, stereotypes which are in Germany are that uh, Americans are uh, very, very arrogant and uh, see themselves as the center of you. I didn't have this passion here in Brattleboro at all. I don't know if it's different in any other part of the country, but it 
in Brattleboro and the Vermont itself, I didn't get this appearance at all. In fact, the kids were very, very interested in different cultures and saw a lot of opportunities to go abroad. I think probably above average, considering also the fact that a lot of people have financial issues and still try to go to travel. And so I think a lot of people are very, very interested to go abroad and uh, gain international experiences and gain different ideas and attitudes. So I would say that this stereotype itself didn't work out at all. And that was uh, that is not true whatsoever. But uh, I mean, some stereotypes are that Americans are not very, very interested in school and learning and don't put a lot of effort in that. And it's the case is, I would say, is that people here, there are very, very smart people here and there are people or the gap between those two things is wider, meaning that uh, there are a lot of, lot of very, very smart people here as there are in Germany and there are a lot of people who are very, very disinterested, maybe not as much as in Germany because the school system itself is different. But uh, I've seen a lot of disinterested people. I've seen a lot of very hardworking people here. So the main stereotype would be that the people here are very, very lazy and don't really care about things. Uh, this is true, but only to a small percentage. So I wouldn't say that. Uh, so I would say that hasn't worked out either. So yeah, all in all, the stereotypes are probably wrong. And I'm glad to actually see that they're wrong and uh, try to persuade my kind of views or my uh, impressions of American people in Germany too. Now you like Brattleboro. You spoke to me on a few occasions on the way from the school to here saying you really like this little town. For what reasons? Oh, uh, I don't know. It is, it is a nice town. It's a very, very international town. There is a lot of different things. It's a multi culty town. I like that a lot. And I like the people or the majority of people I met here are very, very friendly and very, very kind. And I like that and open for new things. And uh, yes, I like that a lot. Like the, yes. And I like the town itself. I like the area a lot. It's beautiful. I live in a big city back in Germany. Leipzig has around 500,000 people. Uh, and I enjoy living in a smaller town where everything is a little bit more calmer, uh, a little bit more settled and chill. And uh, I like that experience a lot. And the amazing thing of Brattleboro is that it is like a very, very small city, but still it has a lot of big city aspects, a lot of people from different countries sharing, basically having like a little melting pot within the city. and. Uh, well, you can meet a lot of new cultures and you can meet a lot of different people f with different uh, circumstances and I like that a lot. One of the things you've done at the school which has raised eyebrows is you have made presentations yeah. on a variety of topics and you've done them in a very disciplined, organized, helpful way and you've done them in English. Could you tell us a little about that aspect of your education? Yes, uh, I tried to, or from the beginning of the year, I tried uh, to give my point of view of certain aspects of history back in social studies classes to the kids. And uh, especially if you're talking about a different continent and the circumstances are, are a little bit different than they are here. And I th thought it would be a good chance to, as a person being from this situation to try to persuade the circumstances which were happening and why things were happening. And so I put a, tried to put a lot of efforts in my presentations and had a handouts for the people and tried them to understand what was going on. Cause I can understand as an American, I would probably don't really understand why things would happen the way they would in Europe, just because you wouldn't have like the, uh, historical background or or the feed of information of historical background necessarily that deep than uh, people from this area. So I tried to explain a lot of things, why things happened the way they did and tried to uh, persuade a 
very objective image of what happened. Before I, uh, before I came to the program, I actually my first visit to the U.S. was uh, going on a trip to Arizona and Nevada, having like the Western spirit a little bit, Western, Western cowboy spirit, and that was very interesting because it was very, very different from the lifestyle in Germany itself. And I traveled a lot to Maine and Cape Cod, both places I very, very much enjoy. And I've been uh, to New York City, of course, a very, very impressive city. I like to visit for a couple of days, probably wouldn't like to live there. I've been to Washington, D.C. a couple of times, two or three times. And I uh, traveled down there with a the car and then stopped in Baltimore and Philadelphia and then stayed a couple of nights in Pennsylvania on the countryside there. And I've been to Boston a couple of times, a very, very great city. I like it a lot. It's hard to uh, try to persuade how the circumstances in East Germany were to Americans because there are a lot of things which are very, very different. and. Uh, probably commonly not seen, but uh, as a matter of fact, in East Germany, the, there was a socialist communist system like there was in the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union was always like the big brother of East Germany, so everything what the Soviet Union did was more or less implemented in Germany, East Germany too. And uh, so w there was a, a planned a plan market economy and uh, people living within East Germany had a huge problem at first because they were coming from a capitalist system where you can buy whatever you want with your, uh, depending on how much money you have. And going now to a communist system in a matter of one or two years was uh, very, very different. And that ended in that the people actually, there wasn't a shortage of goods so uh, people could couldn't buy or it was hard to actually get close to actually get food or the food you like to have certain sweets uh, all the sweets were not uh, sweets like you would find here in the United States or in West Germany they were all like in uh, East, Germany, East Germany produced sweets and clothes and literally everything you had were from uh, communist countries and the people in East Germany of course wanted to have the Nike shoes or the Marlboro cigarettes, all the things they actually couldn't get or only with certain connections. And so there weren't the, or the goods were not that widespread and there was always a shortage and the people had to stand in line for a lot of the time to actually get food and to get certain materials and clothes. And uh, so that was one of the issues. And the other issue was that uh, East Germans were prohibited to travel, so they were only su supposed to travel within communist countries because uh, within the first decades, a lot of people from East Germany escaped from the communist system they didn't like into the capitalist system of West Germany and tried to fulfill their life there, which led to the building of the Berlin Wall and basically the total lock up within their within their country and uh, that bothered a lot of people. So they were basically imprisoned in their own country. So that uh, was a, had a huge aspect on the culture because people were not really knowing what was going on in the world and they were very, very much interested in actually traveling, but they were prohibited from traveling. So that was one aspect. The other aspect would be the clothes which were different and it was actually, I mean, there was a lot of, the problem was not that the, that the goods themselves were uh, expensive. As a matter of fact, they were actually very, very cheap, but the problem was that you actually couldn't really get them because there were only a certain amount of clothes made and those had to fit. So, uh, or had to uh, fill the demand of all the people and that was basically in every, single branch of goods themselves. I think for a car you had to wait 15 years to get a car. It was uh, the same thing with TVs, three years waiting for a TV and uh, very, very different. So yeah, that was the same with housing. You had to have like family connections to get a 
uh, to get actually an apartment. The apartment was very, very cheap. It would be, you would pay probably, con uh, converted into US dollars, you would pay $50 a month for apartment. It was very, very cheap, but it was very, very hard to actually get an apartment. So that was different. But uh, what a lot of people said too is since there was not the capitalistic urge of being better than others and more competitive and you didn't really have the business competitive a lot of people were or tried to help each other more out and were more uh, yeah social with each other and did a lot of more things together in an effort to help themselves to get a better life because it was yeah very very different as a matter of fact the government itself was very corrupt and uh, had an interest in uh, basically controlling the government that was not a real democracy you could there was one part it was a one party system and the party itself had uh, made the elections made up so that it only would uh, provide a certain amount of candidates and you couldn't really you could not choose your candidate you could only choose who not to take and if you would choose not to take somebody on the list uh, you were very very likely to be interrogated by the Stasi which is uh, the secret the basically the intelligence agency of the of East Germany and uh, there were a lot of bad things going on with that a lot of bad inter uh, very very cruel interrogations a lot of kids were interrogated a lot of people were interrogated and the uh, East German government was always interested how the people actually feel about things and try to uh, implement their policies on the normal everyday basis so they installed a lot of spies within the society so that you were actually fearing about what you would say because we're not supposed to, you couldn't say whatever you wanted to say it was not that you had a uh, the free right of uh, freedom of speech you, that was restricted and if people would uh, try to break that and would try to say bad things about the government that were always anxious about that there would be especially in the public that there would be spies who would uh, betray them and then would uh, give the information to the uh, intelligence agency and that they would be interrogated so it was pretty much that the Gestapo system which was established in the Third Reich would actually be very very similar to the one which was installed in the in the German Democratic Republic and that was especially hypocritic considering the fact that uh, the East German government was always uh, claiming to be for or to be fighting all the values the third or the Hitler Germany had and uh, try to establish a more fair country for everybody uh, be very very fair country socialist country and would have not, nothing to do with uh, system, systems and values which were existing during Nazi Germany and claimed actually that West Germany would be uh, the country which actually would get back on those standards while in fact certain parts of the government itself were very very similar to the things which happened in Nazi Germany. Are there people in Leipzig, Germany, your hometown, that would like to go back to the old system, the communist system? Oh yeah, there are certainly some, especially those people who had high-ranking positions of the government who are now uh, no or don't no longer enjoy the privileges they had, especially because of the fact that uh, the high-ranking officials themselves didn't live the life they were always uh, endorsing, meaning that they would of course eat Western products, would be closed in Western clothing and would enjoy all the luxury the West offered, but always preach basically the socialist way and that it would be better. And yeah, those people lost a lot of power and lost, a lot, lost their status and living standard and those are the people who are now in certain parties speaking up to uh, change the system how it is right now. Friedemann, what kind of a role did your hometown of Leipzig, Germany, and the former East Germany play in the collapse of communism and the reunification of Germany 1989? 
uh, yeah, Leipzig was played a very, very essential part in the whole process of reunification and the fall of the Berlin Wall because uh, Leipzig itself was the city where the peaceful revolution, which put pressure on the East German government steadily in 1989, actually was established and was coming up. Uh, to be honest, I couldn't tell you why, especially or especially in Leipzig, those protests started. Uh, it was in 1988 when uh, the situation itself within the late 80s uh, got worse and worse in the East German, in East Germany and the Soviet Union. Uh, people got more and more angry and uh, tried to make their anger publicly in a way that they could and not be interrogated fully and not be uh, at the end prosecuted. So uh, Leipzig was the important uh, fair, uh, trade fair city within East Germany and uh, there was always a sp spring fair in the city where a lot of international guests from the United States and a lot of guests from uh, West Germany would come and uh, the first protesters were actually uh, coming to those fairs and would protest in front of West German media to get international atten attention. So that might be a reason, but uh, that was a very, very active parson in my city, Leipzig. He, his name was uh, Christian Führer. He died actually, I think, like last year ago. And uh, he was very, very active in speaking out against the government within the church and uh, he organized or he put a lot of efforts in organizing a movement and so he established in his church the Nikolai church which is still existing in my city uh, he installed a thing which was called the Monday demonstrations where people would meet up every Monday in the church and would discuss their problems and their demands for the East German government which would, for example, include free elections or uh, fr the freedom of travel and would then go on the street and march peacefully through the street and uh, trying to set a signal and that worked and that over the course of the year 1989 increased steadily until the point when in October 9th up to 70,000 people were on the streets that day protesting against the East German government and that put a huge pressure on the East German government and the people were always threatening the government yeah it's going to be more people if you don't change anything and uh, of course there were certain other circumstances with the border opening in Hungary to Austria and uh, the new reforms of Mikhail Gorbachev, including Perestroika and Glasnost, so that it was not only from the people in Leipzig and other cities and their pressure on the government, but also other influences, but mainly I would say the people who were in masses would stream on the streets and protest, in, especially in Leipzig, would put a huge pressure on the government, which then resolved to uh, uh, make or make decisions which would uh, compromise certain things and would come towards the people or towards the people's demands and claims and that was why uh, on November 9th 1989 the wall uh, was open then. Friedemann Schmidt, thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.